Hey, it's Joel, the 3D Printing Nerd, here at the Bay Area Maker Fair 2017, thanks to Matter Hackers, and I'm here with... Ben Heckendorn, a.k.a. Ben Heck from the Ben Heck Show on Element14.com. That was wonderfully said. Well done, Ben. Thank you. One of, I've been following you for quite some time now, and I've been 3D printing for a couple of years, but you've been printing for much longer. Can you tell me about how long you've been printing for and what some of your first prints were? Sure. Uh, I probably started, I got an intern in 3D printing about seven or eight years ago. Uh, I'd seen it at some of these maker fairs, and I'm embarrassed to say I kind of thought it was a gimmick at first, because all I would see is like bottle caps, bottle openers, keychains, you know, tchotchkes, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we still, we still get accused of that, printing low-poly Pokemon all the time. Yeah, yeah, well, of course, you have to have things you crank out of shows. Uh, but then um, you mentioned the Bill Packs and Pinball Machine. That's right. Right. So I was working on that about so, eight years ago, and a friend of mine was like, hey, 3D printers are all the rage, right? And I'm like, wow, this is weird. There's an Arduino and a 3D printer. And like, it was all kind of new to me because, you know, it, there's a lot less of that back then. I think MakerBot had the, uh, like, the first cupcake, right? That's right. So my friend built this um, weird uh, ball screw driven 3D printer, and it was slow as heck, right? And we, for my Bill Paxing game, we were trying to print like a little uh, lunar command module, like from Apollo 13. Oh, okay. And he still has the print. It's horrible. But I, I saw it because I think uh, we were on a fishing trip and he had it in his tackle box. And I'm like, you still have that print? He's like, oh, yeah, man. It was like my first 3D print. I had to keep it. And I'm like, wow, oh, it looks like crap. And then he actually pulled out. He's like, okay, I printed this, the same model. He still had the file, too. This was on my, uh, he's a big Maker Gear, <laughs> excuse me, he's a big Maker Gear guy. Okay. So he's like, okay, here's that same file printed on the Maker Gear M2. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of funny like, to see the evolution over like the five-year span. So yeah, but when I started uh, using 3D printers for the pinball development, which is a side job that I do, yeah. that was the silver bullet for me, where the light switch was like, bam, and I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> and now I have like seven or eight printers. Oh, so you've upgraded since then. Uh, do you have? What are some of the printers you have? I know there's a lot of new stuff out, but yeah. you're, you've been making for quite a while, so you have some older machines. Can you talk about those? Uh, <laughs> my go-to machine is still my 2012 model replicator maker bot what is it replicator one yeah um it's yeah i still use that okay so i have uh, i have a replicator one i have a flash forge a robox a cube a maker gear m2 okay. whatever the previous one they just released a new one right yep. the, the previous one to that and then i have a cbc orion i think that's all of them that's what was that political thing where John McCain was like he didn't know how many mansions he owned or something in that one election. <laughs> well, I think uh, the the printers that you have, some are great. The, the MakerGram 2 is an actually fairly new one. Um, but I bought it in December. I bought it in December? Okay. <sighs> it's Maker Gear M2. Because I not, then I think of M2, which is a type of memory in computers now. That's a new kind of hard drive. That's a new hotness. Oh, it's so confusing. Uh, is Maker Gear here? Yeah, Maker Gear is actually right over there. We're going to be talking to him next. Okay, so maybe I'd like to see where they are. I've been trying to find them, but I haven't been able to. Uh, yeah, so, right, so, uh, yeah, I've, I got into 3D printing about, uh, yeah, seven or eight years ago. I already had experience in CNC and laser cutting, so 3D printing was, like, the third uh, the third piece of the puzzle. Like, for instance, their, their software too. things like this. This is laser cut, 3D printed, and CNC milled. Like, I printed all the keys in white, painted them black, and then lasered the text. Because you wow. get a bit of detail with a, uh, with a 3D printer, right? And the space bar is 3D printed. The hinges are 3D printed. Then this is CNC milled out of a uh, high-density PVC plastic. And then this is laser cut. I didn't put an Apple logo on it because reasons. <laughs> yeah, my Made in America sticker from back in the day. And uh, inset uh, wood laminate, real wood trim from Menards. It was kind of like a Home Depot. I don't know if you have those out here. It's gorgeous, though. That looks good. Well, that you know that leads me to my next question. I want to talk about that oh, portable that Xbox. That was a hand wired Applica One replica laptop. <laughs> I love to hand wire eight bit computers. It's like you know how some people like to uh, make ships and bottles or do crochet or knit a hat. I like to sit there with a bunch of little wires, and like doop 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 doop. It's fun. That, that was kind of like that was the last time frame you could really hand wire a machine like that, right? <sighs> no. You could probably hand wire like a video game. You could hand wire a video game console up until probably the N64 era. 
right up until everything went BGA, ball grid array, you know, where the pins are under the chip. Oh, right, right. Yeah. It's fun. Because, well, like, you see Apple One replicas over there, and there's, like, a Z80 kit, or Z80, as the British people like to call it, over in the uh, maker room. I, I want to buy one of those. I wish they had them here, but apparently I have to order online. It's, like, little breadboards you put in, like, the Z80 chips and all the addressing fun. I guess that's off topic. So you were asking about the Vilpax and Pinball? No. I Well, the Pinball, just because of the 3D printing, but I want to ask you about the portable Xbox as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, I first built a portable Xbox in 2006. The weird story behind that was that a friend of mine was making a documentary about this kind of like this urban legend area in Michigan. It's like this place called Parashaney. It's like a, like a French name. It, so all, every, it's like this, lo, what's that? It's, you know, like one of those urban legend kind of places like, ooh, it's haunted, or people go there and they die, and there's suicide. So, oh, sure, sure. So this is so crazy. We were working on a documentary about that, and then he was like, hey, what if I commissioned you, this is going to be weird, to build an Xbox laptop, and we could put that online and use that as kind of like a way to dr draw people to come and look at our other project, our film project. It was like a bait and switch, kind of. Uh, which, well, <laughs> yeah, so we did that. And then I think it took him another 10 years to edit the documentary, which I've still never seen. But then the Xbox 360 laptop was very popular. And at that time, I wasn't using 3D printers yet, but I was still using CNC, but it still worked out. Uh, yeah, and then I, I gained a bunch a bunch of new fans because of that, because everyone loves video games. And uh, yeah, I've built, I've built some since. I made a Xbox One laptop about uh, five months ago. I think we sold that. I made it pretty skinny and worked out pretty well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't done that as much as I used to. Like, building custom portables, um, it's kind of on a resurgence, resurgence right now, but like cell phones like just torpedoed like, what, 10 different markets in the world? Cell phones, cab companies, uh, cameras. <laughs> How many markets were destroyed by smartphones, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so from time to time I do that, but lately I've been getting back into like 8-bit computing, like the old classic stuff. So I've I've hit I've hit that booth over there several times or the Altair 8800. Uh, yeah, but I I'm not as far as the 3D printing goes. I don't dial things in like you do. Unfortunately, it's like okay, it's <laughs> it's like ABS or or PLA, which is the best one? Okay, what color is close? Boom, go. <laughs> That's about all I do. Now, you did a, you did that lion one, right? Where you printed the lion? That's uh, right. I printed a really big hairy lion. Uh, the uh, the what do they call that? Hair dryer, right? Yeah, that was pretty cool. And I just yeah, I never I never do fun stuff. Everything is like oh, I need because we do a lot when we 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 still build full size pinball machines. I build packs and machine. I actually, sort of helped start a company now. Really? Uh, spooky Pinball. It's like the third biggest pinball company in the world, for what that's worth. Did he ever see it? I don't. Did he ever play it? Um, no. I, man, people ask me that a lot. Actually, someone from the Queen Latifah show about three years ago asked me if the, I could ship it out to them because they, he was going to be on the show to promote a movie called Million Dollar Arm, which is like a sports movie with John Hamm. And they wanted to roll it out on stage just to get his reaction to it. But they, they emailed me like six days before the filming was going to be, and there would have been no way to ship it to California. Not a pinball machine. It would also would have probably been destroyed in transit. Because we uh, when we did America's Most Haunted, which was my first commercial game, Pinball Machine, uh, I think we had about a, oh gosh, 8% destruction rate in shipping. That's huge. Yeah. It, it, I think we found a better carrier, but we had some problems at first. Like the game would show up and uh, be destroyed. Like actually, the, the game that they gave me that I gave back because I was sick of working on it. But I was like, I want to do a code update and suck. So they're like, here, here's the insurance claim game. You know that it literally fell off the back of a truck, and but it was like it had some scratches in it, so it was perfectly intact. But it was faster to build a new one for the customer than to try to take it apart and fix those blemishes. So basically, it's like a, you know, a, a game that is just junk that we, you know. But it was great for programming purposes because. And then I'm like, take this thing back. I don't want to see this again. <laughs> That's how I am with projects. Once they're done, I have no affinity or nostalgia for them. I want them out the door. Out the door so you can get the, the next door, thing started. Out of my life. I'm going to go drink a beer and play Battlefield. Ha! Um, one more question, Ben, sure. since we have a little bit of time left. Um, you've been making for quite some time. Yeah. What, is, what is the next big thing that you're planning on making, if you can say? For myself? For well, anything. I, I thought you were going to ask me what I think the next big innovation should be in making. No, no, no. Everybody asks that question. Everybody's like, it's the next greatest hinge or the next greatest screw. It's like, no, what are you doing? Circuit boards. 3D printers for circuit boards. That's the next silver bullet. Whoever makes that is going to make a lot of money. That's true. What I'm doing? Okay. Um, 
So I'm working on another commercial pinball machine. Okay. Yep. Also, we're you know still doing the show. Yep. We're doing three main projects this year, and you can follow on element14.com forward slash TBHS, which stands for the Ben Heck Show. That's a good acronym. Yeah. Okay, so some of the things we're doing, we're making a really good glue gun. Because glue guns used to be okay, and now they're terrible. Unless you buy like a... Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean they're terrible? They suck. Like, you, you would buy a glue gun back in the 90s, and it would be good. And, but nowadays you buy one, and it just sits there, and it, everything drips out of it. It's a crappy piece of plastic. It's just junk. So I'm going to make a really good glue gun. It's going to be like, kind of like a three-doodler, but for glue guns. So That actually has some legs to it. So I want a capacitive touch sensor on the trigger, so there's a stand that's automatic. So when you grab it, the stand retracts. So you don't have to let, you can set it down with ease. It's just take your finger off the trigger. It's going to have an analog speed control on the trigger, kind of like, uh, well, 3Doodler doesn't even have that. No, they don't. With a glue gun, you normally have to go like, quick, 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 like milking a cow. So this is like, you just, however much you want, and then it's just continuous. So you can do a little or a lot. So if, like if you're doing like felt crafts, you know, you could have like a really consistent thickness of line. So when you glue it together, you don't have lumps. Like steampunkers would love it. Uh, I want a, a, a light, ambient light sensor, so if you forget that you left it on and then you turn off the lights, it'll beep. A timer, so if you forget that it left it on, it'll beep. Uh, indicator light that tells you if it's hot or cold. Uh, I said capacitance touch, right? Oh, a handle that's actually shaped like a human hand. <laughs> so so many of the glue guns, I don't know if they don't want them to look like guns, but the thing is, if you make it shaped like a gun, it fits your hand. So they make it fit, fit your hand well. Yeah, so basically very ergonomic. Well, have you actually well, uh, used any 3D printer pens? Like yeah, like the 3Doodler. Yeah, or, or any of the other ones, but could you repurpose that? I don't, I suppose you could. We actually bought a 3Doodler when we were in our inspiration phase. Um, it's actually pretty fun. I never used them before. I enjoyed it. Have you tried it? Oh, yeah. I have a couple 3D pens. Yeah, they're, they are... They're great if you have some artistic talent. Yeah. Which I don't. It, it kind of reminded me of soldering, where half the battle is anticipating how the material will react. Like, if you want to make a bridge or something, you have to think about how fast it cools. I mean, even more so than a 3D printer where they have a cooling fan on it. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I wanted to make a really cool glue gun. Uh, you still have to put the sticks in the back. But then they, oh, the biggest trick, it's, it's mechanical extrusion. So when you release the trigger, it retracts to prevent it from dripping. There is a 3D pen right now called the 3D SEMO that does a retraction, so that's out there. Right, because if you have your glue gun, if you leave it on, you just see a big pile of glue. Like, it'll just waste it. Modern $20 glue guns will just waste glue sticks like mad. And it's, uh, yeah, and then, so we're doing that. We're actually working on trying to figure out how to make a kit version of the mini pinball machine. Okay. One challenge is that there's a lot of 3D printed parts in that prototype, but then I just talked to the guy from Lowell's Bot, and you know, he said, what do you say? They've printed like 2.5 million pieces for the printers because like most of them still use 3D printed parts in a lot of the printers. Like even though like even like the Maker Gear M2, it's mostly metal, but there's a few things on There's a few things printed on it, absolutely. And I guess that's I mean if that's scalable, we could definitely look into it because it's obviously easier than making or cheaper than making an injection mold. Uh, yeah, and we're also making a uh, logic gate board game. So kind of like a speak and spell like puzzle game, but it's with um, digital logic gates simulated on a screen and wires and plugs. So those are the three things we're working on this year. And we're also working on a couple movies but that has nothing to do with 3D printing. Which is, and that's okay. You don't have to do 3D printing for everything. Even even I don't do 3D printing. Um, yeah, so I really like 3D printers. The thing that's good about it is kind of like, like that scene in Iron Man where his suit gets built for him. Like as long, well, as you know, as long as the first layer sticks, you're pretty much good to go. So you know, you can go to lunch. You can go to the bathroom. You can play a pinball machine. You can go to sleep. Although if there is, the, I, actually, the one other thing I've noticed is that when the spools kind of bind upon themselves. I, I rigged all my printers so they hang down from the top, which I think is about the best you can do. Because the usual way where the the spools in the back and it goes up and over, that just seems like it's too complicated. I, and you know what they need for three D printers? Uh, What's that? You, uh, you ever, your fish, like fishing pole. The, Okay, if you have a fishing pole with string in it, it has a baler. The yes. thing, it, it, and it goes like it goes around like, whee, 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 like there's a mechanism called a baler, which makes sure that the line is pulled or brought back onto the spool in a consistent fashion. And someone needs to make something like that for 3D printers. Granted, 3D printing filament is a lot stiffer than monofilament. Oh, monofilament, <laughs> oh, okay. Fish, fishing line, yeah. But at that point, we're talking about that's a that's a solvable problem. We yeah. could easily solve that problem. 
like some sort of arm that moves, and if it could work without being smart, if it could just be like a really clever mechanical thing with a counterweight, but that would be cool, because I think that's the last thing, at least for me, that, you know, it, we'll, we'll be at the shop, and we'll be filming or something, then we'll hear that film familiar, which is like the binding of the, of the filament, and everyone knows that sound now, so like Pavlov's dog, we run over and we like just give it, you know, just bring up the slack a little bit. Uh, but yeah, if we didn't have to do that, it would pretty much be completely, you know, set it and forget it. Now, granted, you guys who dial everything in to the nth degree probably have already figured that out. But right now, I find that to be my largest challenge. All right. Hey, you know what? I, I know a few people. I'll look into it. Ben, I want to thank yeah, you so much. Um, where can people find you if they want to go online to find out more about you? Okay, element14.com forward slash TBHS. We're also on YouTube, The Ben Heck Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Ben Heck. And also I have my own website, benheck.com. Perfect. Thanks, Ben. Let's seal it up.